Good morning and welcome back to the studio. This is the second in the series of frock coat construction videos that I'm putting up on my YouTube channel. My name is Kelly Grant. I'm owner and proprietress and tailor, chief cook and bottle washer of Sweet Chew Historical Clothing. And I'm teaching you the process of making a mid 18th century frock coat. Today I'm going to be working on the canvases and they're blending in lovely with the ironing board, but there's my canvas rough, rough cut and pinned together. These are going to give support to the front of the frock coat. You can hear the doggy <laughs> clicking his way around the studio. Um, these are going to give structure to the front of the garment. They're going to fill in the hollow here um, at the joint of the arm. They're going to give the coat a nice smooth front so he looks like he's an upholstered gentleman. I'm using a couple of different materials for the canvas because the Superfine is nice and tightly woven. I don't want to use a really heavy buckram. Um, and I also am using what I have in the studio. So I'm using a mid-weight high mohair canvas, a lighter weight canvas down at the, at the bottom edge along the buttonhole stand. And then to fill in the skirts, I'm using unbleached uh, factory cotton that has not been washed. So it has a bit of sizing in it too. So these are very similar to buckram that would have been used in period. They would have sized linen canvases. I'm using cotton and horsehair because that's what I have in the studio. Uh, I've been known to baste up many layers of factory cotton to do the same or similar jobs as uh, linen because it's a cheaper fabric and I'm wanting to uh, give a nice, strong, tailored support to the front of the coat, but I also want to keep costs low so that I'm not outpricing my clientele. So I have three pieces here that I'm going to now cross stitch together so that they become one piece, and then I'm going to readjust it to the front of my frock coat baste it in place and trim it up nicely. So if you give me a second, I'm going to change the, chang the camera angle and uh, give you an up close of the stitches that I'm going to use. Okay, so I am using a Guterman cotton thread. Uh, you could use linen thread if you're so lucky that you can use linen thread for things like basting your canvases together. Um, I have to order mine in from abroad and I'm out of linen thread at the moment. I can buy cotton thread at the local fabric store for about $10 a spool for what? Almost a thousand yards. Um, so I use that in place of linen thread often, um, and I save my linen thread for where it counts, like sewing linen garments together. I've waxed it like I normally would, and I'm just going to scoot over here and give it a quick press to set the wax. I'm going to use a nice fine sewing needle. And I have my thimble on. Bear's a little stressed out today because Lacey and Pierre have gone out to the barn to do barn chores because it's a beautiful day out and they didn't take him because they're also reintroducing Hennifer Chicken to the flock after she was injured. She's been living in the house for a month.
Okay, so I'm going to tackle this seam here, joining the lightweight Hymo with the heavier weight Hymo, and I'm just going to make a little back stitch. And then working from left to right, I'm going to form a cross stitch that is about, I would say, a half an inch deep. And I suppose I could have used black thread to show you, and I may do that anyway. All right, I'm using a black thread, and it's just a regular old sewing thread so that you can see what I'm doing. I've waxed it and pressed the wax to set it in the thread and I'm going to work this cross stitch from left to right which is different from the way I normally sew but the cross stitch is a bit backwards and to start I'm just going to do a little back stitch and then I'm working little crosses from left to right across the seam and the crosses are about a half an inch deep to really stabilize that seam. So my needle is facing from right to left, but I'm working left to right across the seam, making little X's. And you could do this by machine if you were really careful and didn't stretch out your canvases. But it's just as easy to do it by hand. Sometimes even easier because then you're not having to manipulate the canvases through the machine. And as I get over here closer to the where the three different layers of cloth are on top of each other, I'm picking up all of the layers of cloth except for the ironing board. And then when I finish, I'm just going to do another back stitch. So that's that short seam taken care of. Now I'm going to switch over to do this long seam that goes up the body. Leaving a tail on the thread, I'm going to leave that just like that. <clears throat> these canvases are not ever going to be seen once the body of the coat is closed up and I want to reduce the amount of bulk as much as possible which is why I'm flat seaming these You're going to see me use this cross stitch in a couple of different places as I stitch pocket bags to canvases to support them and stitch them, the canvases to seams and things like that.
Alrighty then, I have basted or cross-stitched these pieces of canvas together to form one large piece uh, with a nice cross-stitch that makes a very flat seam. Won't show on the outside of the fashion fabric at all. Uh, now I am going to baste the canvas to the front of the frock coat. And I'll do that by flipping everything over and basting from the right side so I'll be able to pull it out later. Now for basting, I'm working from the right side. I'm using just plain cotton thread. I'm not waxing it because I don't care if it breaks. Uh, it's not going to be a structural part of the garment. It will be removed before I send it off. I'm going to start up here at the top shoulder and I'm going to diagonally baste along the front edge two or three inches in from the front edge all the way down. I use white thread to baste with so that you can see it. Like I said, it's not ever going to be a structural part of the garment. It's just holding these two layers together. And I'm trying to make everything nice and flat. And here I'm also feeling the pocket, the edge of the pocket bag. How much have I got it? Oh, a little bit. And I'm starting a new thread. Again, not waxing it because it's not structural. It's a basting thread. And coming in a little bit from the arm side edge and basting another row down. This one's going to go through the pocket. So 
So I'm going to take a big long stitch here going over that pocket flap. And now we can continue on with the next step. This next step, I've just folded back the fashion layer. And that's the canvas underneath. And this is the pocket bag underneath that fashion layer. And what I'm going to do now is cross stitch that pocket bag to the canvas and to help me do that easily I'm going to take a little green mat and slide it underneath so I'm not stitching the ironing board and that same cross stitch that I used to hold my canvases together I'm now going to use to hold my pocket bag to my canvas And I'm running out of thread, so I'm just going to finish it off by a back stitch there. And that's really all you need. It's just to support the pocket to the canvas. Now what I'm going to do is trim up my um, canvas so that it's just shy of that front edge. If I was going to fold my fashion fabric, I would want to trim the canvas back, the seam allowance that I would be folding. Because I wouldn't want it in the fold, creating bulk. Um, what I'm doing here is allowing the lining to have a, an edge to stitch to that is just the fashion fabric. Um, and then I'll true up that seam allowance nice and evenly once I've done my stitching. But that gives me an idea of where that front edge is because the next step is that I'm going to draw my stitching line to begin applying the canvas to the fashion layer permanently and I want a nice edge to line my ruler up with so that I can then make my line with my chalk so I have a nice stitching line to go by.
and this stitching line is in from the front edge quite a bit so that I'm not encountering the buttonholes as I stitch. I'm going back to my silk finishing thread. I'm going to wax it. the finest needle I can hold. Which today isn't the greatest, but it is still pretty fine. And some days it's easier to thread your needle than others. And what I want to do is following this blue chalk line, putting a green board underneath so I have something to stitch through to, I'm just going to take a little tiny prick stitch I'm going to start off with just a back stitch there little tiny tiny stitches and then a long carrying stitch I would say maybe a finger fingertip width And this stitch is going to stay in place. So you want to take the tiniest stitch through to the front side as you can. And I'm going to go and stitch the canvases in. And you can barely see a little dimple mark there. That's all you're going to be able to see on the outside. I have moved over to the pleating side of the fronts and drawn the three fold lines for my pleats. And what's going to happen is that they're going to fold like that. And what I want to do is adhere the canvas to the fashion layer inside those pleats. Once again, using silk thread, waxed. Press to set. I'm going to do the same stitch. So, little prick stitch. Back stitch to start, a long carrying stitch. And I'm running my stitching line to the pleat side of that fold line so that the little dimples won't be as noticeable. I'm 
and I can see the stitches from my cross stitching the pocket bag to the canvas and I am going to be missing those as well when I fold the pleat. And I'm going to do this line here as well, the one that runs right up next to the edge of the fabric. But it's coming in a bit from the edge of the canvas so that I have enough room to trim the canvas if I need to, to be able to fold the lining up. So what I'll do is I'll probably stitch right along that, edge, that blue line and then trim off the excess next to the stitching line. There we have the three lines stitched. And now with my nice trimming scissors, I'm going to trim away that canvas in line with that stitching line. And I'm holding my scissors flat against the work And this allows me to keep an equal distance from that stitching line. And here we're getting really close so that it's just fluff. Good morning and welcome back to the studio. For this last section of this particular video, we are going to start putting the lining in the fronts of the coat. And then after that, I'm going to work buttons and buttonholes and the fronts will be completed uh, before we move on to the rest of the coat. The only thing that I'm going to leave open are the side seams, the arm side the shoulders and the neck edge. So that little section right here is going to be left open, but the fronts and the hem and the pleats will all be hemmed and finished off so that I can work the buttons and buttonholes. And Pierre made some button blanks for me the other day. So we're gonna have fun with that and get some nice buttons made. Um, but the lining, is done up next and this is something that is different from modern uh, dressmaking and modern suit construction I can't really call it tailoring because it's it's really all done with glue and steam now uh, which is why we can buy suits so cheaply um, but they also bag in the lining in a lot of cases instead of flat lining and the, the difference is that the lining needs to be anchored to the body of the garment in quite a few places um, or it starts to pull out. And by flat lining, you've anchored that lining in already and you don't have to futz with it anymore after it's done. Um, so I've got the, the body of the garment canvas side up. And I'm laying the lining on top of it flat, flat lining. And then what I'm going to do is start 
really at the top neck edge and I'm going to fold the lining underneath and press it in place and pin it in place. And I'm not folding the edge of the superfine because I want the superfine to be a raw edge. And I have some piecing to do on the skirts because the cotton is not as wide as the superfine is. Um, so I'm going to piece in a, a section of the skirts and I'll do that. And then what I'm going to do after I've folded and pinned my lining in place, then I'm going to foul stitch it in and Pierre will probably put a link somewhere to the foul stitching uh, video, but it's the same stitch that I fell linings in for everything. So um, it's not any different from any other garment that I'm using the fell stitch. So I'm going to start working and you guys can follow me along and probably won't uh, watch me sew the entire day, but this little last little section um, is what you need to finish off the fronts of the garment. And then we'll pop this section of the garment construction up on YouTube for you guys to watch. Okay. So that's the section that I need to piece in, and literally it's that much of the garment that needs to be pieced. So I've cut a, a nice little triangle here. I'm going to fold under that straight edge. Give it a press. Now I've got quite a bit of extra here, so I'm going to trim off to a half an inch and I can see where I need to trim. By following the garment underneath. I don't want all of that extra seam allowance hanging out in there causing bulk. And I'm pinning the seam allowance of the cotton just shy of the cut edge of the superfine so that I'm not stitching too close to that superfine edge. I'm back about an eighth of an inch.
and the hem at the pleat is going to appear a little wonky. It's not going to be a nice smooth sweep because once the pleats are folded in place, uh, that bottom edge has been trued up so that when the pleats are folded in place, it appears to be smooth from the outside. If you were to smooth that curve out, you might have pleats hanging down below the hem of the coat. All right, there it's all pinned in place. And around that curved edge, I put my pins a little closer together so that I could get a nice curve. Now, what I'm gonna start with is this seam here, and I'm gonna work from here to here because I'm going to slip it in place and it'll be sewing from right to left up that seam. And then what I'll do then is start at that top of the pleat, work my way around. Again, I'm going to be using my silk thread. And I'm waxing it. and pressing the wax to set. Using the finest needle I can use. And that fine needle changes in the, on the, the day really depends on the dexterity of my hands that particular day, but I do tend to use fairly small, fine needles. And I'm going to bury my knot up inside and for this seam I'm slipping it in place, meaning the carrying thread is running along the back of the lower fabric and I'm coming up and picking up the fold of the fabric on the top side. And I'm not going through all of the layers, I'm just going through the layers of cotton. It's a bit like the fell stitch, but it's not nailing down all the layers. And I'm sewing all the way to the end knotting my thread and 
and then burying my tail underneath the lining and trimming it flush. And then I'm going to stick another straight pin right there to hold that edge to the super fine. Okay, that piece is done. Cue the dog playing in the background as we do this. So I'm t starting at the top of the pleats and I'm not doing anything with the top of the pleats at the moment. I'm going to bring my thread up underneath the fold of the lining fabric, tuck my tail in, and I'm going to fell stitch the lining to the fashion fabric. and trying to remove the fluff at the same time. So I'm going to go down the pleat edge around the hem and then back up the front of the body. The superfine tends to collect cat hair from cats that we have not owned in years. Doing the best I can. So there's my finished front. I started at the neck edge, hemmed all the way down the front to the hem, hemmed all the way across to the pleats, and then all the way back up the back pleated edge. And I've left the top undone so that when I pleat my pleats, I have seam allowance to then secure to the top edge of the pleats. And I'll take care of finishing that off when I get to that point. The next video, I will tackle buttonhole and button placement. I've also got a couple of ideas that I want to sample out for button styles so I'm going to do that as well uh, but for now the two fronts are finished and ready for the next step so I think that's a good place to stop this video if you like what you see give me a thumbs up hit the subscribe button for more content and don't forget to hit the notification bell to see when the next video goes live Give me a couple of days, I will sample up some buttons and then possibly take you through the process of making those buttons and plotting out the buttonholes on the front of the jacket and working buttonholes. Thanks for coming. Have a great evening.